You keen to get the boat in the water, Shane? Yeah, look at it. What would you mean? So we got the boat in the water, but check this out. Red dust everywhere through the water. It honestly looks like the trailer was bleeding. Like just coming out of the bearings, coming out of the wheels and the hubs, I should say, not the bearings. But look how beautiful it is. fishing for a couple hours but there's not really been anything going on so we have a couple of hours. yeah we put some crab pots out we put a few lines out Shane caught a couple really small of these really ugly fish and I feel like we're at Cape York it should be boom like Sasha Jetta yesterday made it seem like it would be like crazy fish everywhere but we are going to uh, do a bit of trolling now and See what else we can catch and find on the sounder. Hmm? Yeah. That is getting the nod of approval from the boss. <laughs> yep. Tiny little one. We don't want a tiny one, we want a big one. On. We're trolling and all we had to do was stop trolling. <laughs> I think I just got hit too. Oh, shit. Oh. A little buddy. That's your knuckle or something. So just yep, keep on and down, don't it's too high, yep. Oh shit! Are you oh. on? Yep. Oh my god! That rod nearly went too. <laughs> Sorry, team. Ah, uh, just keep yours. What is it? Oh, they're just little. Trev, mine's a shark, I think. Huh. You've got a shark. Yours is Trevally, mine's a buddy. Mine's a shark. Awesome. Trevally and a shark. All right, all right. I'm sorry, come back. All right, there we can do this. I might deal with the shark first. Chill out, bud. What is it? A little tree Black tip, yeah. It's too small on the boat to be both be hooked on at the same time. Oh, can we just hold the. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. So typical, we don't catch anything whilst trolling as soon as we stop. I'm on a bloody Trevally, which is fine, but not great. And Shano's on a bloody shark. Not what we're chasing. Like as soon as we stop trolling. Does that mean this is probably a good spot to fish? Literally like Shane just got a really good bite, but then <laughs> dodgy not Charlotte over here. He was using my fishing rod and my, my knot broke. He just put it back in with the same kind of plastic and just vroom, so. I'm worried it's gonna be a shark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? I broke that time. My leader line. Yeah. <laughs> I did that really well, that oh, one. I thought so too. What went wrong there? A lot in the knot snapped. 
I think Shane's finding it hard having a beginner on the boat with him. Don't use my fishing rod. Yeah. This little spot seems to be. Yeah, you're hooking. Shano's on again. We've not caught anything. We've been on the water since like 10. Not caught anything all day. It's now like four and you're on three times in a row. Interesting, the boys said at camp that they didn't get on to the end of the day too. Who are you going to be? That's a Trevally this time, I think. Trevally. You're lucky, Trevally, if we didn't have a freezer full of fish from the boys, you would be dinner. Oh, shark. Oh no. Yeah, there's a shark behind it. Is that a shark behind it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yep, definitely. It's only a little one there. Get! I don't know, I think it's just a friend. I think it's just another value. Really? Really? Yeah, they do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, just hang on here. Yeah, because he wasn't freaking out. No, that was just another value. Trevor. Big golden Trevor. I don't have to beat him. You're going to take this off me. I can't do this one handed. Oh, he's a good size. Yeah, you're not bad, aren't you? Yeah. This is a proper fish. Oh. They're bloody everywhere, aren't they? Something else. Just keep going, yep. <laughs> it's not as long as my rod. Yeah, they're a bit harder, especially for these sorts of fights. Just, yep, don't go up too high. Just don't let that rod tip go above where it is, really, okay? Yep. Yep. And just lift up slowly. Okay, and stop winding there. And, and it looks to me like a shark, yep. And that's a shark. <laughs> that's a shark. Awesome. We love sharks. We just caught a couple more sharks and that's pretty well it so back on the water tomorrow see if we're a better luck again So we're back for round, I guess this is technically round three, <laughs> but round round two on the boat. So it's a lot glassy this morning. We're about an hour later than we wanted to, but there was an ambulance rocking up when we got here. Not really sure what happened, but obviously delayed us. We're not gonna try and put our boat in the water right next to where an ambo is dealing with someone right on the water's edge. So a little bit later than we'd like, but still getting out. Got a good feeling for some Spanish and some crabs today. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I have a good feeling every day, it never ends up that well. But it's so beautiful. It's so glassy. So the wind's not supposed to blow up as much as yesterday and it's also swung around. It's a northwesterly now. I oh, know, I'm sorry. Whoa, we got lucky big time then, because that broke and then he flipped out of the net just as I pulled, pulled him, him up. <laughs> we got very lucky, we don't deserve this one. Whoa. Got him? One more. Oh, okay, that'll do. 
so much adrenaline. You a happy boy now? Yeah. Yeah. Pull this one in there still? Uh, yep. things and yeah, cook up some mackerel for tea. Catch and cook time. Should be good. Woo! G'day, welcome to the cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you would have seen, we got onto a, um, a couple of Spanish Mac. Um, got one here ready to roll, so we chopped him up. Mac was a big part of. <laughs> what are you doing? He's in the shop. Sorry, guys. He's still in the shop. His microphone. All right, so again, yeah, um, what I was saying, fish is a big part of of us living on the road because it's it's free protein well it's usually free when we lose a heap of lures as you'll probably see as well uh so all we're doing today really really quick um fish and chips just super basic i've got the fire going in the background mostly because we've run out of gas hopefully we've got enough to do the chips uh we're just going to do a beer batter which charlotte's not a big fan well she likes it but makes her feel sick we're just doing it anyway because mackerel and beer batter go together uh, very, very well. I love how you're just telling YouTube the intimacies of our lives. Yeah, well, you know, that's just how it happens. So, making chips, you can do this extremely fancy, or you can do this extremely basic. All we're doing is very basic because it's getting late. I want to go to bed so I can go fishing again tomorrow. So, I'm just cutting them into chips. They're going to go straight in here. We're going to boil them. Um, just, you know, parboil is the technical term. We're just going to get them a little bit soft. Uh, and that's really just to, I suppose, cook them and then we're going to fry them in the, in the oil straight after we do the fish. So that fire is going to reduce down to very hot coals. Yeah, it's not going to be the easiest to regulate the temp, but I've done this on fires plenty of time. And hey, if you've got the right mindset, you can accomplish anything. Three potatoes, it's probably way too much, but Charlotte loves her taters. I'm going to make a quick garlic aioli. We were going to buy tartare, tartare sauce, but it's very expensive up here. And, you know, hey, we don't really eat it that much, whereas aioli will last and get used for a lot of different things. Very basic aioli. Again, we don't have a lot of stuff with us. All I'm going to do is just uh, mince up some garlic. Just going to use the garlic mincer to be honest because it gets it that nice and fine. And we're just going to mix it with a bit of mayo and a bit of olive oil. Like I say, very simple. So 
that's just two cloves of garlic, heaps of this good stuff. A bit of this stuff. So I'm just going to mix that up and then just let that set for a bit because that garlic's just going to infuse through it. Um, you know, obviously, if you're, in a, if you're in a proper kitchen, you can make garlic in all a number of different ways. And this is your quick camping way. It's going to go good on the fish, it's going to get damn good on the chips. You might even have a little bit left over for the next time. Anyway, let's get cooking. Okay, cool. So, parboiled the potatoes. They're basically just, you know, nearly, very nearly cooked if you were just to boil them and cook them. So, they're ready to go. They can wait there. Uh, quick beer batter. So, what I'm doing is self raising flour, delicious beer, and sparkling water. I'm sure, you'll get some arguments about whether the beer's delicious or not. Yeah, hey, you know, goes good, takes what you can get when, you, when you're up here. <laughs> not a lot of beers around. So what I'm going to do, you know, if you want to measure it, you're probably looking like, I reckon like a cup of flour to one beer. You want it thinner, generally thinner than you think. If you're measuring shit, look, you shouldn't, you know, it's cooking, it's supposed to be artistic. So what I'm going to do, maybe it's just a cup, I don't know. I'm going to go by consistency anyway, so I'm just going to put this in a little bit at a time. Mix that up with a fork. Cold beer too, that's important. The beer needs to be very crispy. I have to call you the top of the chef. Sure. That's what happens up here. Still like 28 degrees. Yeah, she's hot. But that's what you want. If you come up here and it's hot, that means there's no one else here. Right, so I'm just going to keep going to get all the lumps out of that. I'm going to chuck a little bit of this sparkling water in. Ooh, when she's sparkling. That's how hot it is. Yeah, like I said, thinner than you think with beer batter. Because um, there's a lot of just a lot of carbs, a lot of gluten, a lot of things going on in here. It's a bit of a science experiment, so. Why do you use the sparkling water? Sparkling water is extra fizz. It dilutes it a bit, like I said, because the flour and the water, the flour and the beer together is really, really thick. So the water just gives it that little bit of thinness, but it's, um, yeah, it's carbonated, which tends to go really well in the oil. Right, that's the sort of consistency that we're looking for. There's still a couple lumps in there, so I'll work on them, but, but like that's pretty liquidy. That's what we want. Because the fish is going to get its own little bit of coating as well, so. Yeah, that's good. Right, a couple ways to do this. If you're doing it properly, you'd have a thermometer. The old wooden spoon is a good trick. Put the end of the wooden spoon if, if it sizzles like a good fried bit of fried chicken should she's bang on other way a little bit of a little bit of batter that perfect that's what you want your fish to look like when it goes in so we're good okay so we're just going to get this ready to fry all that's going to be is a little bit of flour in the batter straight in the good stuff so what i'm going to do first I always like to do this rather than like season that, season the fish because there's a lot of a lot of flour in there. The salt and pepper just gets worked out of it. So I'm just going to dry this off. Salt and pepper. Boom, boom, boom. Let's roll. Cool. So just a bit of that. This. So it's really quick. You see, don't want a lot of it because it just makes you a whole bit of fish more stodgy and. Gross, but just very light. It's just to give that batter sort of something to stick to and it creates that sort of um, like membrane, I suppose, inside that it all 
fries up and becomes crispy and delicious and everything you want from fish and chips. All right, let's bug onto the fire. Have to light me too. Okay. So I've just tested out that oil's ready to go. So I'm just gonna go straight in here. Just drip off as much as we can. Or something? Just old fingers, mate. Old Shane has fingers, that's all you need. Lay it away from you. If you ever worked in a fish and chip shop, you'll know the reason why you do this. Mm. Okay. That's screaming to me very hot, so we'll hit some tongs pretty soon on that. That's good. Okay, that's good. That oil was pretty hot when we dropped in, but like with any frying, you put a bit of stuff in there, it cools the oil down. So I'm just gonna put them over now. And look, this is not deep frying because, um, yeah, deep frying, you need a lot of oil. Oil in Bamaga is expensive. Plus, it's a big waste of oil because you can't really keep it for next time, so. Um, shallow fried, better be about it, be delicious. Yep. So that doesn't take long at all in oil. Um, fish is cooked when your knife just goes straight through it, no resistance. That one, perfect. Uh, chips just gonna go straight in that oil. Should still be hot enough. We'll just give it a little second to heat back up. Obviously drain all the moisture pretty well because as we all know, oil and water don't mix good. Just like that. Just like that. That'll take a little bit longer. So I just panicked a little bit, but if you want to add extra rep points to your dinner, um, I had a fair bit of batter left over. Beer batter the chips. Should have done it. Batter's beautiful and light. Would have been a mint on the chips, but you know, can't win them all. Someone's a hungry boy. I'm a hungry boy. So much regret. Mm. Yep, hindsight. Not even hindsight. You knew before you were doing it, but you were just like, get that chips on. Yeah, we didn't have time. We had to cook. <laughs> well. Battle. I don't know how long that took, maybe five to ten, seven minutes, could be eight. The point of that is, you just take them out when they're cooked, just try them, and they're nice and crispy, then they're done. If you want to do this like properly, properly, you would do what I just did there, parboil them, um, and then freeze them. Yeah, put them in the freezer. Next day, throw them in just like this, frozen, straight from frozen. They'll bubble and carry on, but they'll be delicious. That takes commitment though. Yeah, we ain't got time for that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're more catch fish, cook it, eat it, because we're hungry. <laughs> and it's getting late, as you can see. There is an ocean there somewhere. Most important step, lots of salt when still very hot and full of oil. So I'm just gonna load that on there, shake it around a bit. Because the worst thing in life that I have found is chips that are under salted. Chicken salt would be preferable, we don't have that here. Right, let's slide up. Nice work, Shano. Well, that's it. The best fish and chips you can make camping on a beach in Cape York. Woo! Get into it. Oh. <laughs> I think that was dog shit, but oh. Thanks for watching.
thanks for watching another episode of Life in a Four Wheel Drive. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. We absolutely love having feedback. Next week, we head out to Rocco Island, a privately owned island not far off the mainland from Cape York that was previously a pearl farm. However, now it has been turned into a luxury island experience. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you click the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching guys and we can't wait to see you again next week.